Okay, are you ready for today's science topic? I know I am. Today's lesson is patterns of reproduction in the reproduction and growth unit. First, we're gonna start out by comparing types of reproduction. So we have sexual and we have asexual reproduction. And we're gonna compare some major features of those two types. So as far as the number of parents, in sexual reproduction, there's two parents, and in asexual reproduction, one parent. What about the genetics of the offspring? In sexual reproduction, there is variation. So the offspring are genetically different from their parents. And look at those pictures of the dogs. You can see the offspring, those puppies, look different from their parents. In asexual reproduction, on the other hand, the offspring are genetically identical to the parent. No variation, identical. What about gametes? Are eggs and sperm involved? Only in sexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, no eggs, no sperm, just one parent. Sexual reproduction, two parents, one contributing an egg and one contributing a sperm. What about the types of organisms that undergo these types of reproduction? Well, for sexual reproduction, it's most multicellular organisms. So if an organism has more than one cell, it's probably going to go through sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is limited um, in the types of organisms that go through this process. It includes bacteria, sponges, jellyfish, and some plants. Now, some plants, interestingly, can go through either asexual or sexual, um, depending on their environment. What are some advantages? So sexual reproduction um, introduces variation, okay? So that means there's a better chance of survival if the environment changes. So there's, because there's diversity, there's variation, right? In asexual reproduction, though, what are its advantages? The advantages are you don't need a mate, so it's a faster process and also produces lots of offspring, okay? So what about the disadvantages? Well, the disadvantages of sexual reproduction kind of relate to the advantages of um, asexual reproduction, okay? So the disadvantages of sexual reproduction. You need to find a mate. It's a slower process and there's fewer offspring. In asexual reproduction, the disadvantage is that all offspring are identical. So if the environment changes, they can all die because they would all have the same characteristics. Okay, what about the types of asexual reproduction? So one type is fragmentation. So in fragmentation, a new organism forms from a piece of the parent organism. So the parent is broken into pieces and each piece is going to develop into a new organism. No other parent is involved. One parent is broken. Each piece will, will develop into a new organism. Then we have binary fission, okay? Binary fission is when a parent cell divides by the process of mitosis into two offspring. So parent cell, division, two offspring, two daughter cells. And then there's budding. Okay? Budding is when a new organism grows out of the parent and then breaks off. This happens in an organism called a hydra. And you can see this little bud starting to develop and then eventually it breaks off and it will grow into a new independent organism. What about some other information relating to sexual reproduction? Well, let's talk about fertilization. Fertilization is when you have the egg that came from the female and the sperm that came from the male join to form a zygote. So half of the DNA came from mom, it's in the egg. Half of the DNA came from dad, it's in the sperm. Together, they make a zygote. You can see in this picture how much larger the egg is than the sperm. Okay, this is an important idea that genes code for proteins and proteins result in traits. So gene is a sequence of DNA. So that's your code that came from your parents. The gene is going to code for a protein and a protein is an amino acid chain. Two example proteins, insulin and melanin. 
the protein is going to determine the trait, a specific characteristic. So if you don't have insulin, you would be, have, be a type 1 diabetic. Melanin. Melanin can be used to determine skin color and also the presence of hormones. So let's look. DNA, remember, that's your gene. That's the code. It codes for a protein. And then the protein determines the trait. So in one of these pictures, you can see one of the traits is whether your earlobe is attached or not. And the other example, the trait is eye color. Okay, so what color your eyes are. What color your eyes are comes from a protein, and the code for the protein came from DNA. So genes, which is DNA, code for proteins, and proteins determine traits. Okay, alleles. Alleles are forms of the same gene. So for example, blue eyes and brown eyes. There's a blue allele and a brown allele, okay? We could talk about um, a cow, white fur versus black fur, okay? Forms of the same gene. Offspring can get the same allele from their parents or different alleles from their parents. So in this picture right here, um, with the father and the mother, you can see the father had the red allele, the mother had purple, that means all offspring are going to be purple with red because they're going to get a red one from dad and a purple one from mom. But if they had a mixture, there's going to be all kinds of variation in the children. So alleles, forms of the same gene. Okay, now dominant versus recessive. Dominant, always expressed, doesn't matter. So look at this illustration. We have a purple and a pink flamingo. They mate and have a pink flamingo offspring. That means pink was dominant because the purple is hidden. A recessive allele will only be expressed if there are two copies. So if the parents both have purple, the offspring will be purple. If both parents give the child um, white, which would be recessive, then the white will show up. But if one parent gives purple allele and one parent gives white allele, the flower will be purple. So that white allele is hidden. Okay, it's hiding. It's still there, but it's hidden because the dominant trait blocks it out. Okay, incomplete dominance versus co-dominance. Incomplete is mixing. So red flower, white flower gives you pink flower, mixing incomplete, mixing. Co-dominance, think about like co-captains, both people are captains. So in co-dominance, both traits gets expressed. So black cow, white cow. The um, offspring will have black and white, co-dominance, they both show up. If it were incomplete dominance, then the black and white would mix and it would be gray. Okay, now, Inherited traits versus acquired ones. Inherited traits are things you can pass on to your offspring. It's in your DNA. So your eye color, your hair color, whether you have dimples, whether you have sickle cell anemia, your height, if you can roll your tongue. Okay, those are all examples. Freckles. Acquired traits, on the other hand, they come from experience. Okay, so they're things that cannot be passed to your offspring, like scars, like if you've been tanning like if you have tattoos or what your hairstyle is, or if you dye your hair, or if you have pierced ears or your fitness level, okay? Acquired cannot be passed on to your offspring, whereas inherited traits are. Now, the environment can affect the way your genes are expressed. So you have an inherited trait and say it's skin color. Well, if you are out in the sun a lot, you could have um, a tan, or you could get skin cancer. That would be the acquired part, right? Also, you could inherit intelligence from your parents, but if you don't apply yourself and study in school, it may not be expressed. So that's the acquired piece. And there you have it. Those are the patterns of reproduction. So hopefully you learned a little bit about sexual reproduction, asexual reproduction, 
types of asexual reproduction. And then all those characteristics about alleles, dominant, recessive. Oh my goodness, it's so interesting and there's so much information. So we'll see you next time.